How you doing there, Mr. Mayor? Good. How are you guys? Excellent. You're advertising with that hat on there, I see. No, so I, I apologize for not being there. I don't know if Nick told you um, I was exposed to COVID. Well, we appreciate your consideration. So Yeah, so uh, I don't have it, but I was exposed to it, so I'm self-quarantining. Very good. Okay, we'll call this uh, meeting to order. This is a special meeting of the Rochester Planning Commission for June 30th on this beautiful, balmy evening. So we will speak quickly so that you can get back to your uh, mint julep, I guess we'll say. <laughs> uh, could we have the roll call, please? Uh, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman McGee? Here. Vice Chairman Hauser? Here. Secretary Sage? Here. Uh, Mayor Bixson? I'm here. I'm here, but I don't know if that counts or not. Right. So we'll call you here. Okay, uh, Commissioner Gasson. Here. Commissioner King. Here. Commissioner Lord. Commissioner Clark Martin. And Commissioner Stone. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Please uh, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you very much. At this point, we'll uh, do public comment. Uh, do we have any, any members of the audience who would like to speak on any subject, preferably things not on the agenda later? And do we have any electronic contacts waiting? So no, one, no one's at, at this point in time. Okay, number four, approval of the minutes. And we have um, three separate sets of minutes. Do we have to do those? Can we do them all at once? Okay, these are the minutes of the regular meeting of April 21st, 2022, regular meeting of May 2nd, 2022, and regular meeting of June 6th, 2022. I ask the commissioners if you've all had a chance to review these, and if so, uh, any changes or corrections? And if not, is uh, anyone prepared to make a motion? This would be to approve all three of them. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Stage. Uh, Second by Mr. Hauser. Okay, thank you. Uh, the roll call, please. Uh, Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Hauser? Yes. Secretary Sage? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Gasson? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. And Commissioner Stone? Yes. Thank you. Uh, no public hearings this evening. Number six, considerations. The first one is PAR Pharmaceutical Interior Renovation and Second Story Addition Building on the main Parkdale Road campus. Uh, who's going to handle that? Jackson. John Jackson. Hello. Yep, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. <clears throat> as, uh, as the chairman pointed out, uh, Power Pharmaceuticals is continuing to invest in improvements on their site. Um, the latest one uh, that's the subject of this review is they're renovating a 25,300 square foot uh, portion of their existing building at uh, Building 100 uh, for a septic, uh, I'm sorry, for a... Uh, a manufacturing, an aseptic manufacturing unit. Um, and uh, again, this is a continuation of their existing use on the site. As Vidya points out here in, under background, there's been a number of uh, amendments to their site over the years, 2015, uh, most recently in 2021, there's been improvements in a new building built. So this is part of their uh, continuing improvements to the site. The proposed use is permitted in the research park district, which is the zoning on this particular property. Uh, and in her review, she identified about six items that need to be addressed. And the applicant is here tonight, and we spoke briefly before the meeting, and they're well on their way to uh, addressing these comments. Um, the first one is that they do need to provide a, uh, a site plan uh, per the zoning ordinance to make sure that you know dimensions are proper and, and things like that. They did provide a very nice 3D rendering. It gives a good idea of what they're proposing. 
Uh, but in order to make sure, like I said, we need to tell the ordinance standards that you need to provide a, uh, uh, a site plan. Uh, they need to identify whether the proposed addition is going to generate any additional truck trips uh, as a result of it. They've indicated that it will uh, most likely be minimal, but we need to get that information so we can assess the impact on the adjacent roadway. Uh, the proposed addition involves utility and mechanical equipment, uh, housing functions that don't create any additional demand for parking in our uh, assessment. But again, there's been changes over time. Uh, and we want a good uh, record of the, the uses and the parking that's required for those uses. So we've asked them to provide uh, updated information on parking for the site. Um, they've uh, identified uh, the material uh, in the rendering and in their uh, narrative. Uh, we asked them to provide samples. They were kind enough to bring samples tonight. Um, so again, they, they are working hard to address, uh, address those issues that Vidya brought up. Uh, she also pointed out the color and the rendering shows two different shades. Maybe the applicant can uh, provide some input on that. I suspect it may have just been to say, here's the new one, here's the old one, but I will ask them to, to verify that. Uh, and then finally, information regarding any lighting on the site uh, needs to be provided, manufacturing cuts, uh, that sort of thing, so we can, again, make sure it meets our ordinance requirements for site lighting. So these are all sort of relatively manageable items, and Vidya's recommendation is that uh, if it's acceptable with the Planning Commission, you put this on your agenda for the next meeting for a public hearing, uh, and we'll have these issues addressed at that time. For August 1st, John. It'll be for August 1st. Any questions for the planner? So could we have the applicant join us? Welcome, Robert. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, going through uh, the six items. What we have is um, we have the uh, assembled information that video was looking for, all, all six items uh, to submit, which we will do, um, you know, to follow the process. Okay. Here. Um, to answer some of the quick questions, we expect truck traffic to remain constant. There should not be um, any increase of, of anything like that. The lighting submittals are here. Uh, parking analysis has been completed. That will be submitted through the process. Um, as for uh, colors, we do have the samples, which I can leave uh, for the for the commission, or I can resubmit. It'll be a different color than the it's, previous. It's the same as Sweet C. Uh, exactly. The, render, same. the rendering that you have yeah. is for contrast. So you can see what was existing. So it'll be the exact same. Same. How old is that? Three, four years old, four or five years old. I believe five. Okay. So fading or any problems like that, it'll it'll no, it'll, be match. it'll match. It'll match. Okay. Uh, other questions? Um, they like it. Thank you. They like it. What do you? What do you? Uh, how are things going there? Obviously, you're, we see cranes in the air and things are going great. We're, we're, we're looking for further investment, um, you know, within the city and the community, and looking to maintain our, um, you know, established presence uh, as as a large employer and uh, uh, partner, you know, in, in the city of Rochester. Very good. What are you, um, was there a question? What are you uh, making there now? Uh, same as before, ASA general manufacturing, um, sterile injectables. Sterile injectables. Yeah, nothing, nothing has changed on that front. Very good. Very good. We, we appreciate the partnership, um, you know, with well, the building that's underway now. We're very proud to have you here. Thank and, you very uh, much. Thank you. We're always glad to see more roots getting put down. Yeah, we feel the same. And you're still operating out of the original Park Davis building as part of your complex back then. Correct. Over time, there has been, you know, some some modifications, changes yeah. along the but way. But that one way. old building is still, <coughs> yes, still being used. Sure. We have we 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 have the general manager uh, of the facility here tonight, or Paula Del Papa. Hi, I'm Paula Del Papa. Um, Hi, Paula. How are you? Of the facility. And just to comment on the, the original uh, facility grounds, the, the oldest building that's on the site are the barns that we currently use for like maintenance and engineering yeah. uh, supply. But we also have our um, building that was built in the 50s, which was part of the campaign for polio uh, vaccine manufacturing, and that's mainly an administrative building. The large building that uh, 
is being presented for additional construction and addition is our building that was built in the 70s, 70s into the 80s, commissioned in the 80s. And that was where we really started um, modifying our aseptic build processing. So this change will actually advance our technology and uh, will, will take us onwards for another 20, 30 years, um, again, with uh, another full suite, so. Very good. Well, congratulations. We're glad that you remain successful. Thank you. Thank you. So um, what we need to do here, if you don't have any other questions, is schedule this for a public hearing. And what is the date, August 1st, does it look like? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. So does someone want to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion to schedule. Motion by Commissioner. Public, or a public hearing for consideration uh, yes. of the site plan. Correct. Okay, very good. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Sage. Any other comments? Okay, the roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Commissioner King? Yes. Secretary Sage? Yes. Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Hauser? Yes. Commissioner Gasson? Yes. And Commissioner Stone? Yes. Very good. Thank you. We'll Thank see you in about a month. The next item is uh, 6B, discussion of ordinance changes pursuant to the master plan. John and Raphael, I told them that this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Right, exactly. So first of all, congratulations uh, on your new master plan. I know you guys all put a lot of work and effort into it. And it reflects a lot of thoughts, a lot of public engagements uh, over the course of, you know, a, a period of time. So you should be proud of the work that went into it. And this is sort of a unique situation. We're looking now to implement your new master plan by creating zoning that will reflect and align with the policies you have in your master plan. The beauty of this is that we have a majority of the zoning already written. Uh, as a result of sort of the, the previous master plan. Uh, and so it, it's sort of a nice way to continue the momentum and, and get it on the books. So basically, uh, at this point in time, we have this chart up here. And what this chart shows, the middle column is your current master plan uh, in terms of the future land uses. And in the left column, you see your existing zoning districts. Uh, that you have currently on the books. And in the far right-hand column, you have the proposed zoning districts that we feel are essential to implement the master plan. Now, as far as the residential uh, zoning districts, we don't anticipate many changes at all. Um, in, as far as two-family, uh, there may be some changes to the two-family district. Uh, or it may be folded into the mixed residential district. Uh, so that might be tweaked a little bit. I'm going down the right-hand column now, so I apologize. Uh, in order to implement the mixed, res or the mixed uh, residential multiple family, uh, we're looking at modifying your two existing uh, multiple family districts, RM1 and RM2. Uh, and again, we've already have, uh, you know, the changes to the RM2 district, especially uh, drafted. As far as the office district goes, in the master plan you have a single office district uh, shown on the future land use plan. And currently in the zoning ordinance you have two office districts. And there was some talk in the master plan about whether or not to keep the two separate office districts or combine them into one single office district. We have the single combined office district already drafted and ready to go. If you do decide to go and uh, maintain the two separate office districts, we will have to go back into those two districts and, and tweak them a little bit based on the changes that we made to the single office district. And that's just clarifying which uses are allowed uh, as permitted uses and which ones are allowed special uses. 
So just some minor cleanup and tweaking on those to make sure it accurately reflects the policies that you have in the master plan. Now here's where things get a little juicier. So, you know, the downtown core uh, is pretty stable, aren't a lot of changes in terms of the area where that is, uh, or the zoning designation. But the new master plan has an area shown as the downtown interface area. And in the districts that we drafted to implement the various policies that apply to that interface area, we have uh, three different districts. We have the downtown edge one, downtown edge two, in the transition district. And uh, we have maps to show these, so we'll show you a couple of maps after this. Haven't we already adapted those two, three years ago? Okay, so I probably but, should but back didn't. Up. So those districts have been drafted yes. but never adopted. So approved through the Planning Commission. And, and, the, they and the City saw. Council. Council approved them? Council approved them, but they never got published. Okay. So they've never been adopted. And since uh, Planning Commission and Council last reviewed and approved these, you went and adopted a new master plan. So this is an opportunity for us to go back and make sure there's alignment between those zoning districts and your new master plan. So we'll start over on them then? What, no. By adapting them again? Or? So basically we'll review them. And I'll talk about it in terms of next steps. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you about the next steps. Okay. Uh, after I'm running through yep. this? Okay. All right. So uh, in the uh, downtown interface, there's three different districts. Uh, the general business district basically aligns with uh, the future land use category. Uh, mixed use, we actually have probably, I would say, at least three different mixed use categories. They're not shown here on the chart. There's a mixed use, mixed use one, and Rivers Edge are all mixed use districts that will use zoning districts that we use to implement the future land use category of mixed use. We have a future land use district of light industrial and we have uh, manufacturing. one, what, what we really, yeah, one district that again has been written and drafted and that's the you know, light manufacturing district. Then we have research technology in the future land use plan which aligns with the potential zoning district of office technology research. Again, it's in the can. Uh, parking district, um, we actually don't have a parking zoning district anymore. Um, we do have a parks and open space district, um, which has already been, that's actually been implemented. Uh, and then the rest of these pretty much align with, with the existing zoning. Um, the one thing I did want to point out here is, in the past you had the process of special projects. You all are familiar with special projects, I'm sure. Uh, and in the past, that referred to a designation on the future land use plan of potential intensity change area. That's been eliminated and replaced uh, with an over, overlay designation of special projects in your future land use plan. Uh, so that process is <coughs> only slightly different. Okay, so to show you how this is actually going to evolve, um, we prepared some some maps that Raphael is going to show. Yeah, start with the, uh, start with the core. Okay. Raphael, could you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. Apologies. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Raphael Kaysen. Uh, I'm a senior planner uh, with McKenna. Uh, I've been working uh, with, I'm still free to relatively new with the firm. I've been with the firm since December, and I've been working very closely with John and Vidya you know, getting up to speed on everything that's going on. So I, I look forward to working with the commission and working with staff, uh, you know, to bring this home um, for you guys. Okay. Welcome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so... Basically, the way we propose to tackle this is we'll come back to you with probably two to four districts, zoning districts at a time, and give you a summary of what those districts are, how they relate to existing zoning, and where they are geographically. <coughs> so this is the, the core, the downtown core area, and now Raphael's going to show where the CBD zoning is. So you can see how these relate to each other. So you can see how we're uh, implementing the plan. 
um, show them the interface. Is the core the existing and CBD is new? Or what's the? Core, the core is the future lane use designation. So in your current master plan, this area that you see up there on the map right now is shown as it's um, larger core than it will be. What's that? It's larger than it will be going forward. No. So now turn on the CBD district. Can I just give a quick yeah. thing? So just for the benefit of the commission, I apologize. I should, I should explain this. So how we're doing this is, is, is looking at layers, right? Um, yeah. So the layers of the everything you're seeing that is sort of a slightly you know, translucent, right? There's 60% transparency. Those are the future land use categories. And everything that's opaque that's kind of coming underneath, those are the zoning districts. So, so what you're looking at now is the downtown core future land use. So what I'm going to turn on now um, is the central business district, which is the, uh, the district, the zoning district that corresponds, if you will, to the downtown core land use. And what you'll okay. see is it may not be, it's pretty closely aligned, but there may be some areas where it's not perfectly aligned. And those are the tweaks that we'll make as we work through this, implementing through the zoning. Okay, you can see there's that area to the west that's shown zoned as central business district right there that's not currently master planned for central business district and so when we tackle this area we'll we'll ask why that discrepancy is and we may end up sh changing the proposed zoning for that <coughs> area to some other district that aligns better with your future land use designation or that amend the master plan no no, I think the master plan, which was just recently approved, is sort of a good test of, of what you guys want to see. So now it's a matter of shaping the zoning to fit that. Okay. Yeah. And, and it, you know, everything's not going to fit neatly. You're going to have non-conforming uses that you're going to have to wrestle with. You're going to have properties that are uh, zoned something appropriate that you may not want to change. So in the middle of this... Well, this is not a good example because this is pretty tight, but in some of the other mixed-use areas, you'll have some industrially zoned property, uh, and so we'll, we'll address those as we talk about each district at a time, okay? So that area to the west, Yep. it is part <coughs> of the central <coughs> business district today? It's not part of the area that's future land use planned as the central business district. Aligning with the master plan? No, it's it is, it's we missed that now. on the master plan no. area. What, what are those properties? I can't read it from me. It's the... Um, is that the chamber building? The chamber building and then just office homes that are converted to offices. All on the west side. The contractor's office. Yeah. House, two houses. Okay. I, I guess I'm just not following. So... The master plan doesn't pick those up as part of the central business district. Correct. Is that what you're saying? That's okay. right. Yep. So, so the zoning was changed to align them to be whatever the future land use plan is. When those buildings get sold, theoretically, they couldn't be continued to be used as businesses if they're multifamily or something like that. We know how that happened. It was just CBD because that, I think that. On the line, they anticipated Walnut being the second main street, so they started plopping some CBD zones in there. So it's quite a ways back. Long ways back. <coughs> there you go. Is that the current zone? Um, this is the, this is the no. no, it's not. It's so what we're showing you now in terms of the zoning district are proposed zoning districts. It's not your current zoning map. Okay. So these we wrestled with two, three years ago, but they're sort of tears down from most intense to less intense on the outer edge. Right. It's okay. Go back and show the interface. That, that might be... So now what I'm doing is I'm going to be turning on the downtown interface future land use. So that's the transition zone. So this is in your current master plan. It's area that surrounds the central business district. 
and in your future land use in your master plan it's called the interface area okay the interface district so in your future in your master plan it talks about different zoning approaches to implement the policies that are in this area and based on the districts that we adopted before because these area the area for instance turn on the turn on the transition area Raphael so we drafted a zoning ordinance that never got adopted. It was called the transition district. Okay, it was a zoning district that was adopted. Oh, I'm sorry, not adopted. It was drafted, reviewed by planning commission, reviewed by city council. And it specifically dealt with how you bridge the transition between the uh, more intensive commercial uses, parking and other mixed uses to the east and the single family residential to the west. And in this area, if you go out there and drive it right now, it's a mix of uh, restaurants and, you know, uh, other kind of offices and, and residential buildings. It's, it's a mix. So in order to handle that from a zoning standpoint, we drafted a district that was called the Transition District. And it applies to these two blocks right here. And it has specific standards in terms of the uses that are permitted, uh, uses that are special uses, uh, the development standards in terms of setbacks, building height and things like that are limited, again, to achieve the objective of transitioning between the more intense uses in this interface area and the single family that are to the west. So this yeah. is a district that we have in our, in our can, but hasn't been adopted. So we'll come back to you at our next meeting and we'll lay out the specifics for the transition district. Okay. And you can confirm, yes, that that nails what we're trying to accomplish here, uh, or no, we want to go higher, or no, we want to go lower, whatever you want to do to make sure that that achieves the policies in your master plan. So remember your questions here about the, uh, yeah. where it's okay, zoned, I just, central, I didn't know if we're trying to like do that in this meeting, and I wasn't following everything. Oh, yeah, no, but no, you're, this is just okay. a high level. No, okay. no, I'm sorry, that will come. That will come. It's totally just a teaser. Okay. Just a teaser. <clears throat> All right. So do you guys have a schedule? <clears throat> that it walks us through what meetings we'll talk about each of these. We can come up with that for sure. Okay. Yep. That way we don't get five years down the road and exactly. have accomplished nothing again. No, we don't want that for sure. So. Uh, show them that. Yeah. So downtown edge one. Mr. Chairman? Downtown edge yes. Two. Can I ask a question on that? Sure. So on that, you're know, just doing the downtown edge one just north, the same block, or line that those transitional zones are and why why is that maybe it's a refresher i need to remember but i don't at the moment yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. either if, you know i think because the uh, the land uses that are up in that northern end of that corridor especially along uh, along the university are more resilient uh, that one gap is the parking garage isn't it correct yeah uh, but i think probably because that and northern end of that corridor was more resilient to a mix of more intense mix of land uses. <coughs> I'm thinking more towards the west, where it buffers against or transitions into. You know, if that's the center for the arts, then a, a house, a yeah, parking the, lot. This is all none of those are residential. Here, right? yeah. yeah, that's all commercial. There's only one house or two houses in that area, just yeah. so just south of there. Uses are a little more, I think, resilient to the higher intensity use here. Then these are right here. These are pretty stable single family. And so I think that's why. So hypothetically, that the, the edge one to its west is a transitional zone. Right. But it's pretty solid single family. Not according to your master plan. I'm, I'm talking about it's like you just described this current use is a business on a university, a couple houses, and then it goes down to an eight empty lot and then the Peak Creek Center for the Arts. So that acts as a transition, I suppose. Yeah, I mean that could you could change that to transition if you want to be consistent all the way up. But they are like John said, the uses aren't the no, same. I, I think backing I, up I, this I way. I think so. what he's suggesting is that maybe this changes to transition. Yeah, I think that's how you just described it, the way I interpreted it. But you know, it's a, we'll we'll dig into that when we go through each of these okay. districts, right? Yeah. There may be a mix of zoning in that block right now like so for instance and i don't know off the top of my head and i apologize i don't have 
the zoning map, but you know, this is obviously, I think, probably office designation right here, zoning. Dentist, I think. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, yeah, zoning, from a zoning yeah. standpoint, yeah. it's not, you know, not single family. Yeah. And see, they're, it's all office. So this may also serve as creating the transition okay. without necessarily allowing the same broad use of, you know, I got you. And have, have different. I didn't mean to Develop. get us all Much of it catch. Right. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I think that's a pretty good sort of indication of how we're going to approach all these. And we're going to go through, we're going to look at the office district, the multiple family, the mixed use districts, uh, you know, and probably do two to four districts at a time, depending on the complexity of each of them. So um, we'll come back to you. And at each meeting, we're going to show, uh, you know, like I said, the two to four districts, the standards for each, uh, and the map for each. And we can work through each of those at, at the future meetings. Um, Dr. was just asking if we have um, existing land use on here. This is designed to be a, a, a collaborative tool. So this is, you know, live. Anyone can access it as long as you have the link. And, um, you know, we're planning on working closely, uh, you know, with city staff as, you know, these districts evolve to basically, you know, to play with this and see how, you know, how each of these, you know, zoning, zoning districts or proposed zoning districts are, you know, relate to future land uses. Um, so do you have a toggle for existing land use? We don't. So we can, we can do that. You can import that. Absolutely. We can absolutely create that. <coughs> yep. And more importantly, two weeks before each meeting, you'll get information on each of the two to four districts that we're going to be talking about at that time. Okay. We'll show what the future land use designation is. We'll show what the proposed mix of zoning districts are to, to implement that portion that we're dealing with. The standards for each, the setbacks for each, the permitted uses in each district. Um, and we can even show what the existing land use on those properties are as well as the existing zoning. I would like to see the commissioners get that link. I, th I think it would be very helpful Absolutely, Mr. Chair, if I may, and, and John and I and Patrick talked about this. When you come, we want you ready to go. We don't want to have to avoid five years. We want to have you guys have this stuff, talk about it next meeting, adopt it. And to be able to, to do the, the toggling really helps to understand where we're yep. heading here. We can do that. Uh, Chairman. Yes. Why do you know, I don't know if you know, why we didn't, some of these future land uses um, were approved before. Do you know why they weren't adopted? I, I can answer that if you want. So um, at city council at the time, different council that's here now, there is two adamant people that said, until all of them are done, we don't want to, like, we, we don't want to take them one at a time. We want to get them all done. And we got hung up on office because of a former council person. We got hung up on the trails because of a present council person. We got hung up on ITR because of a resident. And because of that, we kept stalling, stalling. Hit an election, changed council, and then it never. It was time to do the master plan again. So, not a good answer. So we it, <laughs> we went through this with Vidya probably three years ago. Exactly four years. Uh, ago. These new districts in great detail, but we haven't touched them. Planning yet. Commission we sent did them on to job. council. Council adopted, and yeah. they got shelved. My five years was not an exaggeration. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was five, <laughs> and we got close. Steve, but, you were already so off and back on. <laughs> The other thing I'm going to throw out there is that when we started that process of drafting those new districts, we were talking language that no one even wanted. No one was. No, it was for. I mean, it's very at that time, everything was a special project. Everything <laughs> right. was a special project. It didn't matter what the zoning was. Didn't matter what the future land use district was. It was a special project, and there were very minimal standards about how to consider those. So the, the philosophy when we started drafting those ordinances was how can we encourage the type of development that we want, mixed use development, down to transitional development, how can we encourage or allow those without having to jump through the hoops of a special project? So that's why we spent a tremendous amount of effort and thought in drafting each of those <coughs> new zoning districts. So we literally created, you know, several new zoning districts. And it was a heavy lift uh, on, on the part of the Planning Commission and the City Council. And there's back and forth and, and things like that. So it was... Well, they didn't fit. Uh, they were tough meetings. Right. You know. Yeah, it, it was a quantum leap from where you were previously yeah. with your zoning. So it was a heavy lift. And this time, I think 
piece of cake. Yeah, can I, and I could say that in the perfect world, in the planning world, Patrick's done this for how long? You get all the underlying zoning to allow what you want for 10 years, and you don't worry about it. You rezone if it's an exception. We just we didn't do that for 30, 40 years. We just did special exceptions. Or, I'm sorry, special projects. And it, we didn't worry about it. Well, that got kind of wonky for some people saying the yeah. developer doesn't know what to expect. It's like, let's make a deal. And that wasn't the intent, but it, it could almost turn into that. So that's why the heavy lifting. And th this is that close to you won't need special projects even because we'll have the underlying zoning properly. So, so you know, again, next steps, as I mentioned, we'll come back with a deeper dive into each set of districts. And I, I really hope to get through two to four districts per meeting. How many do we need to do, roughly? Uh, I would say probably eight. Yeah, when you combine them, that's probably right. Uh, eight. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah. Will they be part of regular meetings, yes. Mr. Chairman? <laughs> Our next regular meeting is late July. It's July 21st. I think that one's going to be too loaded to do it. So we'll maybe throw one or two in, in there. But or uh, the first meeting in August. So we got okay. two back to back. Yeah. So is that fairly clear, especially for the newer members? It where is. we're heading? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Clear as mud. Clear as mud. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank I think we understand. I think we know yeah. where we're heading. And, so, and, you know, feel free to ask questions. It is, you know, it can get murky, uh, especially when you're talking about yeah. non-conforming uses, existing zoning, and, and the implications of those. So, ask questions. You know, between. And if you could uh, get us the link through Nick, and uh, ex if you would add the existing land use before you do that. I think it just helps in sure. sitting at home playing around with this thing. You just get a better understanding yep. with a visual like that that you can manipulate. So happy to do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, miscellaneous. Uh, no miscellaneous. Any uh, public comment, by the way? Uh, I think any? maybe a miscellaneous, if I, if I may. Oh, go ahead, David. Um, this may not sound right, but let me try. So last meeting, we heard a cleanup on the ordinance section regarding process of the submittal and the pathway on how something moves through the commission. And then I'm remembering Commissioner Lord was talking about efficiency and streamline and removing hurdles, et cetera. And then tonight, um, in a special meeting, we heard a, a request to set up public hearing with incomplete information, which... My understanding is normally we'd say this is incomplete, so we can't establish it to, for a public hearing. But the primary element, the site plan, we didn't have. And I'm okay with what we did tonight because I understand the, the big picture for this particular thing. But if it were something yeah. out of the blue and we shouldn't un, unfamiliar to us, I think we just did something in reverse of what we decided last month. So, so I'm going to so defend clarify that. If you can. Yeah, and I, I agree. In, in theory, I totally agree. There was a site plan in the packet if you looked at it. It was really small. It wasn't the normal site plan page, but it was in but there. But it was in there last minute. There. And all the other things were so minimal. And if, if Vidi had her way, she would just say, I wouldn't even write those in there. It's ready. Mm -hmm. Those are minor things. And they already had them corrected yeah. the day they called her. But she doesn't like us to send them to her again because we have to FedEx them and all that. So something that's com – this was submitted over a month ago. It could have been done – perfectly but she already had written a report and didn't want to write it again which i understand so so in essence there were zero outstanding items they're already there i think you're sensitive to david's comments i am we've and he's right i so. do have a little bit of a follow-up though and it's yeah. really relative to what i think uh, commissioner lord was suggesting is that yes we approve a process but maybe we should look at another element to the process where we can move things along m more quickly maybe this didn't need to be a special meeting I'm not suggesting a big change here. I'm just saying we still need to maybe look at what Commissioner Lord brought up. And I understand. So this meeting was only set for John for this presentation. We just happened to put par on so we could catch August 1st. They weren't even on the agenda, but we saw Patrick was trying to figure out how can we get them quickly. Yeah. And we couldn't unless we did it tonight because we waited to the 21st of July. Normally you would add a meeting July 5th, and that we wouldn't even ask. This would have been on 
next Tuesday, but we on the so calendar, we can notice we before. Okay. Right, so it was the 21st. We don't have 15 days in between the 20th. First, so it was a goofy one this time. But yeah, normally, now I think what Commissioner Lohr was talking about is, is there a way to change the ordinance to say, let's do it one time. I don't think anybody's comfortable with getting all this information and making a decision the same night. So, I mean, it's, theoretically, it's 30 days is all it takes once you see it the first time, right? So that's pretty quick. It's the 30 days prior that video needs to write the report. So it's 60 days on a perfect thing, which happens most of the time. So I don't know how much quicker you could make it. So. Sorry again. Good point. Kind of no, 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 no. Yeah. That's a good point. I just, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll apologize to the commission also. You know, with regard to you getting your site plans late, uh, that was just a procedural error on my behalf. Uh, you know, typically where I've worked in communities I've represented, when you set a public hearing, it's done administratively. It doesn't even come to the commission for setting it in most cases. Um, and when uh, it was brought over by Rose to my office, she said, are we all set? I've got this and this. And I said, yeah, go ahead and uh, move that along to the commission so they have everything a couple weeks ahead of time. And then I realized uh, you do need to have those because you do set the public hearing, even on a standard site plan. So I apologize for that. But we're working out our checklists and trying to get uh, things uh, in a, in a uh, standard uh, order. So we should be there. As it happens, I am delighted that we were able to help out one of our important corporations. So that worked out, it worked out well. I have one more uh, food for thought. Um, and I'm, I'm chiming into what Patrick was saying. We received information digitally in some form. Maybe it was exactly this. I thought that was really good. And I'm throwing out the suggestion, maybe there's a point in time where we switch from getting a packet. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it's unmanageable amount of paper. This is really easy. But I think there are a lot of cities that do that already. I think it would be worth our while. We would love it where we don't have to print them, and, yeah. but that's up to you all. Uh, some people like that, want to see the paper in front of them, but that would be wonderful. <laughs> I'm old-fashioned. I like paper, yeah, but I'm just that. seeing the – it might be it helps with time, too. You have to process it and it's get delivered <coughs> and, and all that stuff. And just That's an something I think you should look into. Well, I don't know how, how we would do that. Well, I wonder if it's – and I agree. I mean, I don't like the paperless office. I think it's unrealistic. But at the same time, I'm guilty of coming here with a big stack. As soon as it's over, I walk over to the recycle well, it's bin. A big and so waste. maybe can we elect individually whether we want paper or electronic, like you do with your bills or something? Yep. And I think that would be pretty easy. So. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Um, can I ask Mr. Ma Mr. Mayor? Didn't we do that with council? We gave you guys the yes. options, right? If you wanted paper, we got it to you. If not, you didn't get it. Correct. And if somebody needs help with printing or something, they can get get it printed out at the city yep. or maybe, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the blueprints if you want to print it out. But, yeah, we used to get all council stuff sent home and now it's completely electronic. We accept that. So we'll do whatever you want. Just I, I would like to see you move in that direction to speaking for myself. <laughs> Commissioner Hauser, you don't keep all this paper? Uh, it, it depends, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have all? Not all, but I got You told me you have I got 25 years worth. About 25 years worth. <laughs> a lot of paper. Yeah. So I got a storage unit. All tight storage unit. It's a fire joke. <laughs> you should have a paper drive. I kept the master yeah. plan. That's about it. Uh, yeah. Great I know. I don't even need it. You know, I get some comments. we got to pool or poll ourselves. I'm, I want to make sure everybody has the technology to do this so that we're playing it straight. You know, everybody's capable of, of doing this. But let's lean in that direction, and you can give us some guidance. But we can certainly start sending out the electronic copies right away and giving <clears> you the paper <throat> copies. And as we progress, if you decide you don't want them, we can form a list of those that aren't asking for paper copies and save a couple trees. Okay. All right. Anything else on that? Upcoming agenda items number nine. Is that on your list? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We've had several uh, site plans submitted that uh, are still uh, far off from meeting all of the uh, requirements to get in front of you for setting the public hearing. You know, as was discussed earlier, we have the Rochester Corny Corner Bar, 
which uh, currently known as Penny Black. That's still operating, still open and operating. Okay. Yeah, and they're asking for a, uh, they're modifying the interior of the place and they're also asking to extend the uh, limits of the outdoor seating area uh, slightly. The um, 1100 North Main, uh, formerly known as Spartan Inn, is uh, asking to uh, modify the facade and become the downtown inn. Did you want to talk on that one? No, I think we're just, we're working with the developer no, to try to downtown. get what we need. It's it's a facade, but it it's a little it's bit. It's still going to be retail, or is it going to be rental? No, it's going to stay a motel, but now. But a the boutique name hotel. changed again? Name changed to Rochester Inn. <laughs> and downtown then, Inn. What's that? A downtown Inn. Yeah, I'm sorry, Downtown Inn. Yep. yep. And, uh, yeah, and he's, the owner is, he's running it, his family's running it, and up the price of the $100 a night and make it nice. So it's, he's modern, making it more modern, and him and video, they're working through the details right now. All right. Okay, and then uh, July 21st, uh, we've uh, published the public hearing notice for section 2703. That is the process that was discussed. You guys set the public hearing at the previous meeting and uh, we're all set to go on that one. Uh, that's the uh, ordinance language that your attorney, Jeff Crow, yes. put together. And that's all uh, we have at this point in time, Mr. Chairman. So our next meeting is, and that's a regular meeting, July 21st. That's correct. And then there'll be another meeting on August 1st. August 1st. Okay. Right. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Uh, Stuart here. Um, I, just, just for people to know, I will not be able to attend the meeting on July 21st. I okay. apologize for that in advance. I will also, I will be out of town as well. I will not be able to attend 721. Okay. I would uh, third that comment. Oof. I will no. be here. You will be here? I will be here. <laughs> God willing. There's three. I'll be here. Yeah, Trisha or Eric. 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 Okay. Mr. Chairman, there was talk previously about getting together with city council for the zoning. Yes. Like the uh, class, you know, that the, is that anything we, coming we up? We haven't set a date yet. No, which, okay. I don't think we quite got there, but it's going to be there. Again, it's summer. And of course, I know, I get it. So, a completely so better. better. <laughs> September. I bet you it's September. Yeah. 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 Why don't we just plan on that? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. probably going to be September. So. That's okay. fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other up, upcoming agenda items, Nick? Nothing to add. I'm excited to get John going here. Very good. Very good. Just out of curiosity, has there been any movement with the admin building? Interest. I mean, Mr. Chairman. Please. Mr. Mayor, I think you're going to get that tomorrow. When I talked to you a little bit about what we talked today. So they just sent out a notice to the committee members. And we had someone to hear that used to be on that committee. So I saw it. I wrote back to the superintendent's office, said, do you mind if we share this? And so in general, it's just they rejected all the bids and they're just starting over again. <laughs> so, and they did get turned down for the historic designation on the National saw Register. That. Yeah. Yeah. So by, so they really. They've been too, mo too modified already. Yep. In 85 so and 77. So they're, yeah. so they right now said we're going to rethink and try to move into the new building in August, but continue to work out of both and see what happens. So okay. nothing concrete. Okay. Well, that buys a little time. It, it does. Yeah. And they, they didn't say they, they just said they didn't accept any of the existing proposals. I'm sure they're going to work with some of them to see if they can figure out something that's beneficial to both parties. But at this point, they did not accept any. Okay. The but, district has not had any, um, they have not had any interest in trying to rezone it or anything like that. No mention to the city. Okay. No. That's, that's good. Nothing. Nothing. Mr. Chairman, I just have one more. Mm -hmm. um, has there, I think the plans were going to be available soon on the new All Abilities Park with the grant? <laughs> I always have a complicated answer, so I apologize. <laughs> so we have them here, but we got two grants. It totaled way more than we need. Engineers went out to that. So originally it was going to be up by the Memorial Grove in, in that hump area. There's a little spot. So that was the small grant. Well, then we got from um, Representative Slotkin. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Her, that we've got like $850,000.
then couldn't even fit it in that area. So then it was like, go back to the original area that it's in now and just put that whole thing there and don't do it up at the top in the, in the Memorial Grove. So engineers went out and in order to go backwards and replace what's there now, you happen to be in the floodplain. That kicks in a whole bunch of, if you touch it, it kicks in all these eagle requirements mm -hmm. and about another, I think it's $80,000 in drainage improvements, but we have the money. So now everybody's reevaluating it. Could we build a new one, build it in two sections almost, right? And we were worried about the neighbors there because that's a big play lot. Right now it's quiet. Where and would this be exactly? So if you're going through the park behind, um, going up to the ball diamonds, okay. that path, it was, there's just a, a mound. That's where it was going to go originally. But when we got the grant, they had a much bigger uh, area that they could build with, which was designed for where it is now. So uh, we think, staff thinks it's probably in our best interest to spend the extra money, because we have it, and on the drainage and keep it away from the neighbors and put it in the middle of the park. Or, and then, so the or dis renovate so. The disadvantage is we were going to expand that parking lot to provide additional. Exactly, and that's what, that's what triggered the neighbors saying, say what we don't, it's all wet there we don't want any more cars there so yeah but the fallback is not to put parking on that roundabout from Griggs down to no so the fallback would be go up to the community house and build a switch back okay. to get you down to the park you still have to have access to it and not put any more parking anywhere originally they were going to come in off of Ludlow with a little teeny lot we're like you're going to cut down eight oak trees to put seven cars no so it kept moving around trying to fit it in and we didn't expect to get a million too that, that came out of nowhere. So, so it's a good problem to have. But we'll, once they settle on it, which should be in the next month or so, it'll go back to council, and then we'll decide which direction to go. So okay. it wasn't going to be built to the spring anyway. So No, I was just curious. That's because, a fair question. You know, I had asked the question, too, when we were looking at approving, get, applying for the grant, because there were no plans for the old park. Exactly. And so, you know, that seems like a better solution because it resolves exactly. old and the new. Right, because the old is... You, Either you just get rid of it and fill it in, or, or and that's kids. They really like that. That's different, uh, different functions or facilities there. So we would love to have or have enough money to renovate that and then build a smaller all abilities at the top where it's not so loud. So it's kind of fluid still. Okay. Because we got this grant out of nowhere, which is kind of cool. Now you don't need planning commission for that at all, but technically, no, but if, we'll bring it here. If you would, get us a copy of oh, it. We will. We'll bring it here for Just be curious to see it. Yeah. Email it. There you go. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Okay. Let's see. Did anybody else have anything? Patrick, did you have something? No, I'm. You're all set. All set. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Unless anyone has an objection, we will consider this meeting adjourned. Awesome. Good luck, Mr. Mayor. Have a great uh, yeah, thank holiday you. weekend, everybody.